Do you think you're not talented enough to make an art journal? Or that you don't have the right supplies and tools? Well, I'm not very good at it, but I still enjoy the process, and you can too. Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name is Cindy, and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. If you've ever thought about starting an art journal, but you've been a little intimidated by the process, I just want to encourage you to get out your craft supplies and give it a try. You don't have to be able to draw beautiful pictures or have all of the right inks and dyes and punches and tools to get started. I truly believe that everyone has the ability to make a beautiful, creative art journal, even if you don't consider yourself an artist. I personally can't even draw stick figures, but I still enjoy the process. So today I'm going to show you my art journal pages and work on one with you together. So grab a cup of coffee. This is kind of a long one. Let's spend a little time crafting together. So this is my art journal. I am repurposing an old Walt Disney book. And I do plan to recover it some at some point. I kind of want to save the Mickey imagery here, but cover up the spots. So I don't really have a plan for that, except that I want to do it someday. And I am kind of holding on to some of the elements of the Walt Disney book. I guess I should show you how ripply all my pages are. You can find people that will show you how not to have that happen and to do better um, pages, cutting out pages and putting pages together if you're repurposing an old book. But I don't really mind the ripply pages, so I'm just kind of using what I have and allowing my pages to do what they do. So, like I said, I want to hang on to some of the Walt Disney pieces, so I kept this page and kind of took a little credit for myself there. This first page, I'm not sure if I'll embellish it or not at some point, but I just kind of left it the way it was so far. This page I did a couple of years ago, and uh, I think what the inspiration for it was was I had a couple of magazine pages. This page said Fuel for Life, and then I found this kind of romantic picture in a uh, magazine as well, and cut them out and saved them for quite a while, and then got the inspiration to make this page. Uh, I did have a little bit of scrapbook paper that I used, some tissue paper. I made this sort of ugly flower out of rubber bands, just sort of as an experiment. And then I had this uh, quote that I really liked that I put on there as well. This, this page had some tissue paper laid down with some Mod Podge for the texture, I think. And then I painted it black and did a little bit of finger painting of gold on the top. And I have a gold paint pen that I think I did the edges with here. And also some dimensional paint for some of the writing as well. I have a couple of, you know, I have some stickers and some scrapbooking things, but you can see my sticker here isn't even really staying stuck very well. So there's definitely some imperfections with it, but I think it turned out okay. My next page was the first page that I did, and it's still my favorite, uh, probably just because it's sort of whimsical, but also uh, I just like the way that it turned out. I used the page from the book that actually had a picture of the Disney castle. It was just a black and white photo, but it was the full page, and I just was very inspired to make something using that graphic. So. Uh, I used to visit Disneyland as a child. We would go there to California to see my grandparents, and so it's very nostalgic for me. So I, I thought of the quote kind of, remember when you believed in magic, because I think as children, everything is much more magical, but we should try to hold on to that as adults. And this wording is cut out of, just hand cut using, um, I think I just traced it and cut it out with scissors using some cereal box to give it a little more dimension. And then over here, I made sort of this little booklet. Again, I used some of the dimensional gold paint to make it, to give it a little more texture. And I think there's tissue paper on this page as well underneath the painting. 
And then I added some of my favorite Disney quotes from some different movies. When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio. Anything Can Happen If You Let It from Mary Poppins. Uh, the Moment You Doubt Whether You Can Fly, You Cease Forever to Be Able to Do It. Peter Pan, I think that's a good one. Unbelievable sights, indescribable feelings, soaring, twinkling, freewheeling through an endless diamond sky. I just like the imagery of that. That's from Aladdin. And then, of course, my all-time favorite, which is why sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast from Alice in Wonderland. So I just had some little, I don't know, I cut out a lot of images from the book pages that I had torn out just to add some colorful Disney characters to my page. I had a few little knick-knacky beads to add a little bit of dimension. And I like the color of it. I don't know. I just, it's kind of one of my, it's just still my favorite page. This next page was based on sort of having a bucket list, but not necessarily the big bucket list items. It was kind of the idea of your daily bucket list of things you should kind of think about. So I have quotes like, remember what matters, smile, get your hands dirty, embrace now, spread hope. Um, just sort of things to keep in mind on a daily basis to live a more happy and joyful life. And you can see from this that my painting skills as far as beaches and sunrises is quite third grade-ish, I guess, but um, but I like the color and I cut out some more cereal box for a little more dimension on some of the pieces and, and I still like the general idea of it. So even though the execution is a little bit amateurish, uh, I it's still a fun page for me to kind of absorb when I open my journal and look at it. This page is obviously just the background. Uh, I did it fairly recently. I think I used a little bit of Mod Podge and white paint to seal the page initially. Then I added some chalk with my grater and I just made the, so I added the brown and yellow to make this little speckly look. For some reason, I liked the phrase, the cookie carnival, so I didn't paint over that. I may end up covering it up, I don't know. For the circles, I just have some brown and gold acrylic paint, and I used the paint cap just to make my circles. And then I used my finger just to brush on a little bit of brown around the edges, and a little finer gold edge with just again with my finger. So I'm not sure what is going to happen with this page, but I kind of, I, I like the background a lot, so I have, I have high hopes for it. This is just a blank page that has the whitewash house paint on it. Again, you can see how crinkled it is, and my um, book doesn't open real cleanly, but you can certainly, if that's something that you worry about, you can certainly find people that will show you better ways to get your journal to lay flat and lay open. This next page I did oh, quite a while ago, and I just, I like all the colors. I, this was a, mag, a magazine image. I think this back piece was a magazine image as well. These pieces were photo paper that I sort of printed with some alcohol ink. This was a magazine page that I actually pasted in here, and you can see how crinkly it is, but I just, I liked all the colors and the way they went together in this blanket stitch around the edge was just sort of a fun experiment. So I don't know what's going to happen with this page. It's been waiting to be finished for a long time and I just haven't gotten any inspiration to do anything else with it, but we'll see. Maybe something else will happen with it. And this is my most recent page. I painted it with some white house paint primer and then I just had some fun with some crayons. I'm pretty sure I've had these crayons since I was in grade school, so it was high time to do something with them. So I just used a little bit of tracing or parchment paper and a little chunk of 
the different colors of crayon and just melted them along the page. And I'm sure you could use a regular iron, but I had this little clover mini iron, so it was fun to play with and see what I could do with it. Then I just used a black sharpie to kind of finish off the edges with the faux black stitching here. And I, I didn't want the crayon to melt and move around anymore, so I put a layer or a coat of gloss Mod Podge on top of that. So that's the page I'm going to work on in a minute. I have a few ideas for that. But I also have sort of stark inklings of ideas for a couple of other pages. This had so much imagery on it that I kind of wanted to save that and hopefully I'll come up with an idea where I can highlight a lot of that imagery and hold on to that Disney part of the page. And then this was a fun part of the book. They had these big open pages. You probably can't exactly see what I've done here, but there weren't a lot of characters in this picture. They were, it was mostly just a scene of, I don't even know what Disney show it's from, but I cut out a lot of little Disney characters and added them to the picture. I may add some quotes or something at some point, I don't know. But that is where I've gotten so far. There's a lot of just pages left in here. Some of them will be torn out, some of them will be you know, and glued together. So I'm not sure how many pages I'll end up with, but that is a quick tour of my art journal. So this is just to show you what my workspace looks like. I've tried to kind of get out everything I think I might want to use. Of course, you always find something, you know, you come up, think of something and you probably have to stop and run get it. But I have got a lot of stuff out here. I do have a few scrapbooking punches and papers. I really did use my primer paint, house paint on my pages. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this, but if you are anxious to dry your pages faster, you can use, I just have a regular hair dryer that I use to dry the pages a little quicker sometimes. I do have a few stamps here. Um, I don't use them a lot, but I do have some alphabet stamps. Where are they? that I think are handy to have because you can just write out your own quotes and different things. I have a couple of stamp pads but just black and silver so nothing terribly fancy. Some scissors. Uh, I bought this little embossing tool oops, at Dollar Tree for a dollar to do some embossing. I don't know if I'll use these but um, embossing on some aluminum cans so that's just a fun thing but it's very and it's a very inexpensive way to add some dimension to your projects I've got some glues out here uh, anyway embrace the mess and just get started is my motto I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to use these and I don't even know what they are but I I think I got them at the thrift store with a bunch of other junk but they're so fun on this page Anyway, I found them in my stash, so I may try to use them on this page. I'm not sure. But I have to put them aside now. See if I can sprinkle them on there later. My idea for this page is to reuse some pictures that I made for a little calendar years ago, but I'm sort of trying to save the page or save the pictures from those pages. And so I had laid out, I cut out the pictures and I'm not entirely sure how they're going to work here, but I don't know, I moved them around a few different times. I, sometimes when I'm going to put writing on there, I do try to kind of test out how it's going to fit. So this is just kind of to see how my lettering might work on here. Just to take up the space before I glue everything down.
This is from quite a few years ago, but my husband and I did the St. Baldrick's thing and we shaved our heads as a fundraiser. So that's the before and after of that. Not sure exactly where all of these are gonna fit. I have a lot more pictures that I want to, I don't know, uh, try to put in a little pocket down here. So I think I'm gonna use this, this plastic sheet protector to try to make some sort of pocket for the rest of these pictures because I have quite a few of them. I think the first thing I want to do is try to make this little pocket. So I am not super great about, you know, measuring things. But I think, I mean, I want these guys to stick out a little bit, but they'll also show because it's going to be clear. Um, I don't know. I should probably use a ruler, but I'm far too lazy for that. So, I'm just going to cut this edge off. Okay, I didn't get that straight at all, did I? Apparently, I can't see very well. I'm in the frame anyway. Alright. Okay. Let me try that again. I just use this. My dad always used to say, measure twice and cut once. Alright. But the beauty of this is it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to like what you're doing and how things are progressing because it's all about sort of that enjoyment of the process. All right. Put this back in the frame here. I'm not sure about gluing it. Probably should only have one layer on here, but it's very thin, so I don't know about that either. I think maybe I'm going to put a little white cardstock edge around it. And then I'll have to think about whether this goes on this or somewhere else. Hopefully I can draw a straighter line this time. Sure, this might be a little bit too long. You can see I have a big crack right here on my pages. I don't know if I'll try to cover that up or not. I think I need to trim this down a little bit. And I want this to be my top edge so that I don't have a double pocket there, I guess. So I've got my Fabri-Tac glue here, and I'm just going to try to glue this to my plastic sheet. I like this glue because it dries really quickly. I don't know why I have this blue tip on there. That's not good. All right.
Yikes, about to lose the glue here. So I have all this glue, so I'm just going to commit to putting it down here. And you can see the dog hair, because there's dog hair in every project I ever make. Alright, let me get the cap back on this before it explodes again. some clips to kind of hold this because my pages are so wavy I want to hold this a little better so I've been sitting here pondering what to do next and I'm a little bit nervous but I think I'm going to try to do the lettering so not sure how I can if I can do that on screen or not but here goes nothing I want to use about the same spacing I think so I'm not sure what, I guess I'm just going to write it kind of like that. I, I do know how to do calligraphy too, but I think I want to just use this kind of more standard script. Need something. I'm still playing around with these guys, but uh, I don't know, might be a little too much, I don't know. I think my next step is going to be to glue down my pictures, which I guess I'm ready to do. So I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue again because this glue will not crinkle the way like Mod Podge and stuff does, so I want my pictures not to be ripply even though the pages are So due to some poor planning on my part, um, <laughs> I'm kind of going to end up, I think, covering up my word here. 
not totally, but mostly. So I may rewrite that over here and try to cover this up somehow. I don't know. Um, it's very busy because I do have a lot of photographs. So I'm not sure visually how I like this, but it's sort of like these little elements that I made out of uh, beer and soda cans. Just using that Dollar Tree embossing tool that I was talking about earlier. And uh, I don't even remember what these are called. But they are also good little tools for embossing if you're doing some hand embossing. Oops. Blending stumps is what they're called. But they do help uh, when you're doing some embossing. And they're also pretty inexpensive. Um, I also had this other idea where I wanted to kind of put some pictures on a little key ring and hang them somewhere. <laughs> so I still have a lot of pictures to go here. Um, and I was gonna glue these little uh, tab, pull tabs on the back, but I think I'm gonna just use the tape because I wanna cover up the rough edges too uh, on those. So I'm just using a little painter's tape I guess I'm gonna just keep going. I don't really know what I'm doing, but sometimes you just have to can carry on. I think that's kind of fun. I'm not sure what's happening with it, but let's see. I did save some of these fun color pull tabs too. I'm in the frame. All right. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those, but they're kind of fun. Feeling a little stumped because I feel like it's quite busy, but I don't know. Maybe it's just going to be busy. So I'm going to use a little of the crochet thread that I used on this last page and see. I think about hanging these somewhere. It feels a little bit busy, but sometimes <laughs> you need to make it busier just to make the busy not so bad, if that makes any sense. I'm thinking but this somehow is going to be attached right here. I don't know if it's long enough, but this is just a test. And then kind of, oh, it's too long. I think it's too long. And then sort of hang down, I don't know, somewhere in the way that you can flip out of the way when you open the book. I don't know. That might work. Uh, like this here. I think I can kind of commit to those two things. And then these seem to fit all right. 
I kind of was debating whether to put this one on top, but I think maybe I will. And then I'm going to use this one to cover up my oopsie there and rewrite years over here. So let me get my glue out, I guess. Just let that start dripping over here. I think it'll work for these guys. This glue takes 24 hours to cure, so it grabs pretty quickly, but you don't want to be. pulling on it for a while. Hands are sticky. Okay, trying not to bump those. Find my Sharpie. Try to do this over. Like it never happened. I don't remember where I wanted that. I don't know. How about there? I've reached the point where I need to walk away a little bit, come back and look at it with fresh eyes in a little while. I don't hate it, but it is a little bit strangely busy and I don't know, I'm not sure. It's a little much, but we'll see. So I have to confess that I got a little inspiration last night while I was watching TV. So I went ahead and finished up my page and uh, I ended up using a few of my fun little, I don't know what they are, transparent lensy things. Uh, I did some more with the Sharpie. I found this old calendar that had some waterfall pictures in it. And some of the pictures were really vibrant colors, kind of like I was using on my page. So I ended up using some of the waterfall paper as well and a glue stick. I also added some of this dimensional paint in the white color just to highlight some of my lettering. And I didn't end up using this little keychain ring because it was just a little too bulky when I got everything put together. So let me show you how I finished up my page here. You can see where I added some of the little transparent lens color, colored lenses. I don't know what to call them. <laughs> Whatever they are. Um, I just couldn't not use them, so I did add a few here. I did a little more doodling on this page just because it seemed a little unfinished. Uh, I added the white dimensional paint to my lettering. I still don't like the lettering very much. It looks kind of amateurish, but <laughs> this is kind of a full on color assault page. This is some of the waterfall paper, and I made a little booklet out of it. I think it's helpful to kind of let your eye rest here and not just have solid photos on this page. 
when you flip it over, you do get to all the photos, but the idea is that you would kind of pull them out and look at them so you wouldn't have quite the same, you know, assault of pictures all at once, so it's not quite as cluttered. And then in here, I just kind of rewound a old paper clip to make this little swirl to hold the booklet shut. And then I did still use my pull tabs and I just took them onto this paper here. And I used some more of the waterfall paper on the backs here. And then just kind of wrote a note about where the picture was taken. So I don't know if I'm completely finished. I feel like maybe something could happen here. Uh, I don't want to do too much here, but I don't know. Uh, I'm stopping for now. They say art is never finished, but you just decide to stop working on it. So that is where I am right now. I've just decided to kind of wrap it up. And if I get inspired to add a little something later, I will. So I hope I've given you some unique inspiration and some unconventional ideas on how to make an art journal. And I hope that you feel encouraged that you don't need to have a lot of drawing skills or be able to paint beautiful landscapes or watercolors. You can just dive in with the things that you have and start working on creating. So I hope that you will be inspired and encouraged to just give it a try. Don't worry about your skill level. Just allow yourself to play and have fun and I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment and upcycled project.